Hello again, this is Captain Photo, and uh, this time we're going to talk about the HDR camera. So, the fact is, there really is no HDR camera. Any camera can be an HDR camera. So what do you have at your house already? Hopefully we don't have to go out and buy a new one. Um, the requirement for an HDR camera, or for a camera that is useful for HDR, is that it have bracketing, automatic exposure bracketing. So what that means is you can change the settings on your camera so that when you hit the shutter release, it'll take a series of shots at different exposure levels automatically. Almost any DSLR today will do that. Some of them take three shots, a bracket of three shots. Some take more than that. And you can buy other things that will extend that up higher, but you don't need more than that. Um, you don't need a professional camera by any means. I don't have a professional camera. I have a, a Nikon D90. Um, it's a great camera. It's the one I started with in HDR, um, what, four years ago. Uh, 12 megapixels, you know, I mean the new professional cameras, the new Nikon D800, um, that's 36 megapixels. That's, those are big files. And actually I'm consciously not buying one of those or, or another professional camera like the D3S or any, any of those because, you know, frankly you don't really need it for HDR. Um, you know, photography online is pretty much shared online. Uh, it's, it's, less and less printing it out and selling prints, although we certainly still do that. Um, but you don't need 36 megapixels to display things online. And all it does is clog up your workflow. So that's why I'm not doing it. I, I don't need to buy, you know, six terabyte drives and, you know, super turbo computers to just work on my, my photo files. So, simple is good, and simple will serve you well. It served me well. I make pretty good HDRs out of a 12 megapixel camera. So the requirement is that it be uh, able to be set up for automatic exposure bracketing. Um, why do we do that? Why do we need to bracket photos? Um, well, that's what HDR is. Um, a camera itself cannot see the full range of light in a scene. So. <clears throat> You know, I'm sitting here looking out at the golf course, and I can see into the deep shadows, and I can see texture and the clouds in the sky. Uh, a camera can't see all of that with one shot. So HDR, high dynamic range, is meant to capture that. So you can, you can see into the shadows, and you can see the texture in the clouds. Well, how does it do that? Well, that's why you take the, the bracketed uh, photos. So you take, in my case, I take three photos. The first one is two f-stops underexposed. So the exposure is less, and that makes sure that exposure on those bright clouds isn't going to be overexposed. Because when you overexpose something, you lose all detail in it. It becomes blank flat, uninteresting, boring, bad, bad. Um, so that's the first shot, is two stops underexposed to, uh, to properly expose the highlights. And then the mid-range uh, is captured in the middle exposure, which is um, zero exposure. That's the proper exposure, so that gets all the rest of the scene. And then the overexposed shot, which is the last one, is uh, two stops over exposure. Now, what that does is it opens up the shadows. That means now the shadows are exposed enough to where we can actually see detail in the shadows too. Now the highlights, the clouds are totally all blown out in that shot, but we don't use that information. We only use the information in the, in the shadow area. Okay. So I know that all sounds very complicated, but you know what? It's not, because we have software that'll do that. 
It's almost like, you know, there's an app for that. The app is called Photomatics. And what you do is you, after you go home, back to your, your studio, but basically, after you go home, you download your photos off your camera into your computer, you take your three bracketed shots and you feed them into Photomatics and it has an algorithm in there that blends them all up pretty and there are some sliders to tweak along the way and it spits out a HDR image. Now, that is the way I learned to make HDRs four years ago. Since then, something has happened to where um, my workflow has greatly simplified. I make better HDRs, and you can make better HDRs very simply without tweaking a lot of crazy knobs and sliders and things. <clears throat> so we'll talk about that in a, in a future video on how we actually process the HDR. And uh, you know, that's, that's really the, the nuts and bolts of what I teach. So back to the camera. <clears throat> so get any DSLR camera. Uh, learn how to set its uh, auto exposure bracketing and start using it, okay? Well, before we can go out and actually use the camera, there are a couple other things we need to know about setting up our camera so it'll um, take an HDR photo that we can later post-process. Um, one of the things we have to set is the sensitivity to light of the camera, and that's the ISO, ISO. So that's the, um, determines how much light has to come into the camera uh, before it'll record a proper exposure. Uh, the lower the ISO, the better. What I mean by better is less noise. If you have to crank your ISO up high, it creates more noise, and that has to be dealt with in your post-processing. And just so you know, the HDR process in itself causes noise, and so we have noise to deal with anyway. So let's start with the cleanest images possible. So here on my uh, Nikon anyway, the ISO is this bottom number here. It's, uh, you see, that's at 200, okay? So that's, that's where I like to keep mine. I can go down to uh, 100 if I want. It's just harder for me to handhold the camera then because it lets in less light. So 200 for me is a nice balance. Okay, the other, another setting is the uh, f-stop. And that determines how wide the lens opens to let light in. A low number on the f-stop, you know, f1.2, f2.8, that lets in a lot of light. F22 is a very, very tiny aperture and doesn't let in much light at all. So it takes a longer time to expose. I've found, and um, my reading has told me, that F8 is pretty much the perfect exposure um, to have, or the perfect f-stop to have, because that's the sweet spot for most lenses. Their lenses are the sharpest at F8. When they're wide open at f2.8, for example, like this lens I think is a 2.8, um, it can get a little fuzzy, especially on the edges. So if you want nice, crisp photos, which I do, um, I use f8. That's, that's kind of a universal number. So again, on my display here, I have my f8 set up here, and, and you can, to change it, you just click the thumb wheel here. So there's f11 and 13, or I can go down um, all the way to, there, there it is, 2.8, okay? So that's my uh, f-stop, and then my ISO I can change on this other thumb wheel here. There's 200, 250, you know, 350, so um, that's, that's how that all works. Okay, now, now we get to aperture. Now that is for HDR, that's the big one. With, we want to shoot in aperture priority mode. And so again, on my Nikon, there's a dial here. That, and most cameras have a dial like this to where you can dial in different scenes and different programming modes. Well, for HDR, you set it on A, aperture priority. The reason is the aperture determines what's in focus and what's not in focus. I'm sure you've seen photos where uh, 
something's really sharp in focus and then the background and foreground are blurry? Well, you don't want that to happen in your HDR at, on different, um, on different, on the different exposures. You want each exposure to have exactly the same zone of focus. So you want the aperture to stay identical on every one of your three or five or seven brackets. Okay? So you set it in aperture priority mode and f8 is again my preferred aperture that's a, a good balance of sharpness of the lens and keeping everything in focus so it works actually it, f, f8 is a really really safe f-stop to use for most of your everyday shooting and that's what i probably recommend when you start going out to shoot is you shoot at f8 you know you'll 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 learn fast enough and be moving things around soon enough so you know don't worry about it maybe you noticed and you're wondering why this tape is on my camera here that's over the flash see that's a flash that pops up I never use a flash I do HDR I don't need a flash I'm bringing out all the light there is with my process and besides on flash camera is bad bad okay it's just flat ugly light it gives you red eye and I just don't use it so I just <laughs> I got the camera and I took a piece of packing tape and I just taped this down so there's no way on earth it's gonna pop up and uh, wreck of a photo of mine okay you don't have to do that but again that's what I do so now we have our camera set up let me just show you real quick what it looks like to actually take an HDR photograph okay we're set up on auto bracketing we have aperture priority set my ISOs at 200 my f stops at f8 I'm all set all I need to do is find something I want to take a picture of so let me step over to the window and do that okay and let me show you what these look like so there's the underexposed one, normal exposure, and the overexposed. So you see in the overexposed one you're getting detail in the shadow area, and then in the underexposed one um, you don't see the shadows too well, but the, uh, the sky, which is very cloudy today, is, uh, is, uh, still has detail in it. Not a lot, but that's all there is today. So that's what the process looks like, setting up your camera and then taking an HDR photograph. It's not very complicated really, it's just something to get used to. So don't be afraid of it, don't worry about it, and just keep it to these simple things for now. You know, we'll expand on that as we need to, but for now we just want to learn how to do this and make perfect HDR, because your first HDR is going to be perfect, I guarantee it. So we'll see you next time. This is Captain Photo. Thanks for being here.